in many programs that you would go to um, to engage in recovery from addiction, uh, there's a spiritual element to that program. You know, so we have a spiritual program or something like this. And the most common uh, spiritual traditions that they draw on are these Eastern traditions of Buddhism, um, the yoga, the mindfulness, meditation, these kinds of things. Um, and honestly, I, I don't think one can put into words the benefits of those practices. <clears throat> There's another spiritual tradition that's more Western um, that I think is underutilized, uh, which is spiritual psychology. And it has to do with how the psyche works, and it has to do with virtues. It's sort of this uh, mix of Greek thought and philosophy and psychology. And that element is crucial because one of the things we're addressing when we're looking at recovery is who we are in the moral sphere. Because when you're in your addiction, you feel demoralized and often ashamed of how you behave. And one of the things that you're trying to figure out is, how do I get in contact with my, what's called authentic self, and how can I be a better person? Which is a huge antidote against shame. If I feel like I'm being a good person over a period of time consistently, I usually don't feel that ashamed. It might take a while to get there. <clears throat> but we have to understand what it means to be a good person. And that's challenging. It's a really complex philosophical issue. And it's something that spiritual psychology looks at a lot. Um, in the moral sphere, the way that I think about that is to think about um, a person as having a, a lower self, or you could call it, a, my, my great teacher, Dr. Rabbi Mordechai Finley, calls it the ego self, which is the, um, it's a perfectly healthy part of the self for quick, unimportant decisions. It's the part of me that's driving the car. It's the part of me that's you know, picking this out at the grocery store. That's in chit chat on the elevator. That's all ego self. Oh, would you like me to push this floor for you? Uh, let me open the door, you know, etiquette and you know, basic, basic memorized, um, mechanized ways of responding in the world. Ego self is great at that. We need it to function. I don't wanna be looking at a doorknob thinking, what do I do here? How do I go through this door? What does this mean, right? Ego self is great with that kind of um, interaction that we have. The ego self is terrible at complex interpersonal reaction, and any deep relation, relational interaction is complex, right? I do not want my ego self in charge uh, in an argument with my wife. It's going to be reactive, impulsive, it's gonna think short-term, not long-term, it's gonna forget my higher goals and all that stuff, all that stuff. So, one of the uh, core parts of spiritual psychology is this question of being able to identify when I'm in my ego self and when that's appropriate and when I'm in my higher self. And one of the really tricky parts about addiction is that you become confused about the difference between those two ways of thinking and you use um, inconsistent rational thought to rationalize and justify ego desires, if that makes sense. One of the easy ways to tell whether a thought is an ego thought or whether it's a thought from the higher self in the midst of a conflict, is an ego thought does not stand up to scrutiny. If you ask your ego deep questions, it cannot give you deep answers. It doesn't have deep answers. And so for instance, if you're in a loving marriage, but you're having a difficult time, and you get in a fight about the toothpaste cap being left off, why didn't you put it back on? And the ego self, I'm going for a drive, I can't handle this, you know, or forget her, or, or wants to attack, and you say, huh, you ask the ego self, is that who I wanna be and how I wanna respond in this marriage? I mean, the ego self has nothing to say to that. I mean, the answer is no, obviously, but that part of us doesn't know it, right? No, the goal is to be in a loving marriage, to learn to have some kind of you know, wall of virtue, uh, my mentor calls it, and to figure out how to respond in accordance with the situation so that you can continue to build on the most important thing, which is your marriage, not the toothpaste, toothpaste cap and who left it off.